Hi everyone and welcome back. Welcome to my YouTube channel and here I am Tarun Sharma and we are going to cover another video which talks about microservices. So I'm already covering uh, one playlist which talks about all about microservices that's a master playlist. And recently we also worked on uh, building an APIs. We built auth service with API gateway using REST microservices and the same thing we have already covered with the GraphQL and that is with Apollo GraphQL Federation that is what we are this is not all because we have lot of other things to cover uh, we know how to use a REST and we know how to use a GraphQL but that's not all about microservices because what a microservice is doing microservices exposing some interface so that a client can communicate and can send a message and can acknowledge or send a request where the server can respond or a client can send an event and server can acknowledge and perform some action on top of that right so we have covered this thing so i will just uh, gray out this color and the graphql also we have somewhat covered now we are now we are going to talk about uh, I mean, uh, I want to build another systems which are using gRPC, which are using RabbitMQ, Redis, Kafka and all. And for all those things, Nest.js microservices are the perfect place to start with. In the Nest.js microservices, we can create, we can use the other protocols like the TCP, AMQP, MQTT protocols. And we can use these custom transporters like I can use a gRPC, I can use a RabbitMQ, Kafka, Net and Redis. I mean their objective and their uses is different but we will explore all of these together so we know how to build rest apis and all these are based on the http protocol right these are http based the graphql is also http based even the grpc is also using http 2.x 2.0 the only thing is when it is sending a request to the server now it is not sending that in the plain uh, text play, payload it's like a proto buffer it is sending to the server and uh, already a schema is defined what a server can send so it is on top of rpc rpc is remote processor call where server is already defining a schema or a particular methods that it can respond to and client can request all those methods so I, i'm going to talk about all these things First of all, we are going to talk about Nest.js microservices, which are actually divided into two type of microservices, which one is request response based and another is event based. So you will understand the difference uh, why I'm, what I'm talking about. When you say event based, event based is let's say I'm using RabbitMQ, Kafka or Nets or Redis, all are event based because you are sending some event and then it, you are not worried about if the response is being sent because those are purely asynchronous in nature. You are sending it to Kafka or RabbitMQ, then the, the consumer service will act on to that. So there is another microservice which is the consumer microservice that will act on to that. So you are not going to get a response back. You may get just a simple acknowledgement, okay, uh, has been received. So we are going to handle two type of uh, services. One is a re request response based like which you are doing in the HTTP REST APIs or GraphQL APIs on HTTP protocol and gRPC is also a request response based because what you are doing you are sending a gRPC request to the gRPC server from the gRPC client and you are getting the response okay on top of that we have AMQP, MQTT these are the known HTTP protocols which are we used in when we want to exchange a message between the services like, like in the message driven approach and for that we can use these other components like uh, we can create a services which which are based on redis which is used for pubsub first of all kafka uh, is like a message broker rabbitmq is a message broker and uh, TCP, TCP is like uh, Nest.js microservices by default use a TCP as a, uh, as a transporter protocol until unless you don't change it. So TCP like TCP is a layer uh, 4 uh, protocol, HTTP is built on top of TCP only. So we will talk about these things. So let's say I'm, I, want, I can talk about a simple example. What we are doing is let's say I wanted to create a simple 
architecture and I wanted to play with these uh, microservices, how we create a client, how we create a server. So a simple example is, let's say I have a simple client. This is the user. I mean, we will understand it through the demos, like how we are creating all these and how we are matching all these components. This is API Gateway. This API Gateway, can, we can build in simple and NestJS service, a REST based service. And you are going to send a request like a API V1 sign up. Okay. And this API Gateway will have uh, because this Kafka, RabbitMQ and Redis, what they provides? They provides because Redis is just like a system which is, Redis is like a software. Kafka is like a software, right? RabbitMQ is also software. And this NestJS is providing a transport medium so that you can send a message to the RabbitMQ and consume a message to the RabbitMQ. Send a message to the Redis and like publish a message to the Redis and consume a message from Redis. Similarly for the Kafka, you send a uh, event send a message payload to the Kafka and then there is a consumer so all these three are doing the same it's for used for PubSub this is these two are used for the message broker with the nets also so what I'm doing here is I'm going to have this because all these three for all these if you want to use all these NestJS provide a two implementation you can create a NestJS microservice client or you can create a consumer so there is a client and then there is a consumer i will create a nestjs microservice using and then here it is consumer proxy consumer and this is a service client proxy so you just need to use a service client proxy this will be uh, your nestjs microservice this is going to be your nestjs microservice and you will use service client proxy from your existing rest based microservice and you will send a message to the RabbitMQ. So it's like a send. But you need to have a client proxy instance pointing to the same host and port of RabbitMQ. And then it is consuming it. So this is like a NestJS microservice we are creating, which is consuming the message. So similarly, also here also we will create a client, Kafka client and Kafka consumer. So the, what will client will do is client will send a message using client proxy. So this is a Kafka client proxy and this is, I mean, these can be a simple NestJS service, which is using a client proxy module and they will send a message to RabbitMQ to Redis. Let's say the Redis is also falling in the same piece. So you can use any of these together. This is RabbitMQ and this is Redis. Okay. From the client proxy, Client proxy is nothing but a module which is connected to the Redis, which will send a message as a publish. And then there is a consumer which is consuming to the Redis uh, and it will receive a message. So these all are based on the event patterns because you are sending an event from the client and the, the consumer will receive it. So the RabbitMQ, Kafka, all are in the same line. Let's say here is the API gateway. What I will do is I will use the this Kafka client proxy here, proxy module, and through the API gateway, I can just emit an event, and what it will go, go, it will go to this is Kafka your system, Kafka server, and then I can have a simple NestJS microservice. That NestJS microservice can listen to all the event, all a particular event patterns which are coming to the Kafka. So from here, you will be using Kafka client proxy. I mean, just a NestJS module. And through that, you will just send a this dot uh, client proxy dot emit particular event name. And you will send a, and this microservice and this client is using the same instance of Kafka. So NestJS microservice will be able to consume this event pattern which has been submitted or emitted from this particular service. It can be just a simple REST API. You got the client proxy instance and you will send it. Similarly, instead of Kafka, it can be another client proxy for the Redis. So here, instead of Kafka, it can be Redis or it can be RabbitMQ. You will create another client proxy, 
module and you will register a rabbit mq there and then there is a some consumer out there which is listening to all the event patterns coming to rabbit mq similarly uh, you can have a redis which is using doing the pub sub so redis also you can create a client proxy and then there can be a consumer consuming it so if you look into all these things what all these things does right kafka so here i will be creating a kafka client module dot register that means i am creating a kafka client in my existing service the transporter is kafka this is my client and this is the kafka where the kafka server is kafka system is running maybe a remote server this is the host and this is the group id and this is the client id these are the required things and then once you register all these things uh, from the client you will just like subscribe to okay client.connect and then you will send a message this is happening at the consumer end this is the message pattern or oh, dot send send configuration option so this is the kafka client and this client will help us to send a message to a kafka okay and then there is a kafka client kafka and then there is a server another service another nestjs microservice which is looking for this particular message pattern which we will send through on to the kafka and then this is how you will receive the payload coming from the kafka okay this is how you are creating client i am mean, talking about create microservice how we are doing it maybe the whole snippet is not there but this is how we are creating a service you can just change the transport to kafka or something here we are not creating a kafka server it's just like another microservice listening to the kafka another microservice listening to the redis or rabbit mq now you can create these kafka client rabbit mq client or redis client in your existing service or you can create a small nest js lightweight nest js microservice which has the client and the client dot send and client dot emit this is what they will do so let's say this is the controller right and this is your microservice so this is how you will handle so this is at the consumer end this is you are getting the data at the consumer side when you are sending this uh, from the client side okay event based yeah this is the kafka this is a simple tcp client you have created and uh, maybe i can show you something client proxy client dot connect and client dot send similarly you will do the same thing like this dot the kafka client dot send or emit this is the redis client dot send or emit and then there is a you once you just publish this event there is another service which will be listening and which will read this result okay so this is a simple example which i will be talking about user will this is just a simple rest api which will use a kafka client proxy send it to the kafka and then there is another consumer service which will listen to the all these events okay another thing uh, another important part which we are going to talk about is uh, we can we can talk about simple grpc also let's say this is a simple example okay another part here is let's say i have api gateway it's fine here i'm going to create a grpc client proxy what grpc client proxy will do is there are already grpc servers running inside a nest js microservices and i have a grpc client proxy so i can talk to this service send a protob of request to this service to that service and all these are request response based service because these are using http2 protocol and you already know when i either we write rest or graphql or the grpc so grpc you can understand it uh, from the rpc it's just like okay you send a request and you get the response and this is the api gateway it will aggregate the the response coming from these microservices so here you will create a grpc client proxy for this for this service for that service like let's say there are three microservices you will create a three proxies and based on the request coming like api v1 sign up so it will go to the auth service api v1 orders it will go to the order service so you will just have a client proxy 
and client proxy dot send. Now it knows okay where to take and which what is the proto buffer definition needs to use to send the request to the appropriate server. I mean I haven't explored a gRPC that much, so it will be new for me and a kind of fun. We are already talking about the REST and uh, GraphQL that will be I am completing the GraphQL and then we will talk about this simple gRPC example. REST this API gateway is a REST interface that will use this client proxies and send a request to these gRPC based services. A simple demo example that would so from that we will understand how we are creating a gRPC client. Let's say we'll talk about this here. Okay, here package zero and let's see what we are doing. So this is kind of a proto we are defining at a service level and this is how we are creating a controller. Okay, let me see the client how we are creating. So this is how we are creating a client. So I already know that uh, I'm going to use a transport gRPC. I already know the, the location of that gRPC server, gRPC service running somewhere. And this is the package hero. And this is how I will send a, I will send a request to gRPC service. You can see hero service. I'm getting this hero service from this and hero service dot find one. So this is what this is actually the client. First, we will get X got the access of this client. So we can at API gateway level, we can have a client. Uh, we can have an instance of all the services, microservice one, two, three, and based on which microservice we need to hit, we'll just call the method there. So to, 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 I mean, this is just a one simple microservice, but uh, we can have multiple services where, where we, uh, in one service, we have a gRPC client in another service which is returning the response from the client, client request. Okay. This is how we are defining the handler at the gRPC uh, service level. Okay, so these are like a couple of examples uh, we I'm going to talk about. I can just talk about some more uh, simple examples. So what this snippet is talking about, uh, maybe there is a service and we are just getting the auth microservice auth client instance and then we are sending a create user request to the Kafka service, Kafka microservice. Okay, there is already a Kafka consumer somewhere and there we are sending this request. Similarly, there can be uh, another service doing the same thing. Let's say here, this is the auth microservice. This can be a payment microservice. Okay. And you are just sending the event through the Kafka. Similarly, when we talk about uh, the gRPC, we create a gRPC client and uh, based on the client, we send a request to the gRPC server. And from the, this is a message driven. You are sending the event because this is here, you are using Kafka, this client Kafka. But when you create a gRPC client, that is a message driven. Sorry, that is a request response driven means you are sending the request, you will get the response back. But these are fire and forget because here you are using Kafka and these are the message driven. You are just sending a message, this event, and it will do some execution when this event is received at the consumer end. Okay, so let's uh, not talk much theoretical. Let's do some uh, demos, not just a simple services where I'm just using these snippets, but the real world examples, like apart from building this, these simple REST APIs or GraphQL APIs, what else we can do with the help of these microservices, right? They are there for some purpose. So we can utilize them and build some systems. Okay. So stay tuned. I will be putting more content on this because I'm already doing REST and GraphQL is finishing. After that gRPC is something uh, prominent we can talk about how we can create a gRPC based microservices and call them from the API gateway.